All right, so I'm getting ready to do a glass insulation test. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, a liter and a half of vegetable oil into this pipe. And these insulation pieces are to hold the glass pipe later. So this is going to be my baseline. I'm going to put it together and I'm going to heat it up in uh, the same sun conditions um, with oil and see how quickly it heats up. Then I'm going to switch and I'm going to put the glass insulation tube around this section here. And then I'm going to retake all the temperature readings and see if it heats up faster at the higher temperatures, which means the stale air um, in the glass is insulating. This is my base test for the um, glass insulation test on the larger unit. It's already at uh, 67 degrees Celsius. So this is where the heat here, um, it's so hot that it heats up the air and then hot air rises um, above the pipe. So when I have the glass insulation, it'll all be covered and it'll hold the heat in around the pipe. So I'm really interested to see how much a difference it's going to make with the glass pipe. Um, I'm going to test this a little longer. I want to get over 100 degrees and then I'm going to switch and I'm going to test the same thing, exactly the same thing, just with glass insulation over the centerpiece. First test is over. It got um, to about 117 degrees in just over half an hour and now I'm cooling it down. It just went to 99 degrees so I have a fan that's blowing air on the very hot pipe. So now I'm trying to cool this oil as quickly as possible. This was at 119 degrees. So I have it in a pot with water in it, and that's going to cool it down. Now it's at uh, 56, 57. It's going down. All right, so it's just starting to heat up. It's doing uh, very well. So what happens is the sun is going to hit this uh, tin foil, and it gets goes through the glass, but then the heat gets trapped there because there's a pocket of air, and that's what's happening right now. So the actual glass is really cool. And then inside, um, it's about 61 degrees right now, so that's what prevents heat loss. This is the design we're going to use for the solar car. This is stale air. Um, a better design even would be to create a vacuum to remove the air, but this is a great uh, baseline for the testing. Also for sun tracking, I'm going to have two sensors here in the shadow, and then when they hit sun, they're going to move the motors. And this pipe creates a nice large shadow that's very uh, crisp, so I won't have any problems with that either. This is what the solar car is going to do. It's going to heat oil up inside this pipe. It's going to be insulated with a glass tube um, with stale air or vacuum. And then I'm going to circulate the hot oil and heat up um, water to run a steam turbine. So it's a huge amount of energy that's in this oil right now. Okay, this is amazing. 186. Now it's 3.30 in the afternoon, so the sun isn't that powerful anymore. So it's amazing that there's still enough power to keep this oil at this temperature. And again, you can touch the glass and you won't burn yourself. Um, it's very hot inside that pipe, but the glass isn't that hot because there's an insulation of air. The oil is now at 190 degrees Celsius, almost two liters of vegetable oil. So uh, getting close to the smoke point of the oil, the oil is going to start breaking down. Also, my temperature um, gauge only goes up to 199. Uh, it's meant for an oven, so <laughs> what I'm producing here our uh, temperature is higher than you'd see in your oven. Um, so it's, uh, it's quite amazing how much power you can get out of the sun. So this kind of test really shows me that the solar car is possible. Um, so I'm going to be use a similar size tube. I'm going to also use a similar uh, glass insulation pipe with the stale air, maybe a vacuum. Um, and then this curve is going to be almost twice as big. So this is only three and a half feet. I'm probably going to use six feet, so that's more energy. Right now, this oil is at 192 degrees. Um, I'm only probably going to operate between 150 and 200 and um, also the sunlight's only coming into this small 16 inch section. I have to insulate it here so there's heat loss all over the place where sun energy isn't coming in. Also the bottom is just bare so this is extremely extremely hot and uh, there's no insulation on there. So in the solar powered car I'll be getting a lot more power and it really shows that it's possible to run um, a high powered steam engine. Um, from this type of solar thermal device. A lot of light spilling past the tube that doesn't hit it and that's just because my accuracy of the curve and the tin foil mirror aren't good enough but that light there is shining through the house and onto that door. So you can see the, uh, the light there. And here I have the highest um, temperature reading I can get out of this oven thermometer. It won't show me 200, it'll show high so I'm just about to max out this oven thermometer um, it's pretty amazing that you can get this much heat from the sun. So here's the test data. Um, the blue is not insulated, so that's without the glass and the stale air, and the red is insulated. So you see at the higher temperatures, here just over 100, they really split off. 
So the same amount of energy is going into both of them, but one of um, the blue one loses a lot more heat to the environment. So this is almost straight all the way to 140, and then this is just straight here, and then it really um, loses a lot of power. And here is, uh, so we just looked at the first part of the graph there, it's just a, um, a zoom in of that. Now you can see that as you get close to 200, even with the insulation, you start losing. So that's when you're gonna need vacuum. Um, a vacuum between the glass, but it's quite straight up to 150. So if we're operating around 150, uh, I think this insulation might be enough. It's very good.